Hi everyone! Now, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy a little trip down memory lane. Every day, actually, I start my day by looking at my Facebook memories. Sometimes that's a great idea, sometimes it reminds me of things I'd rather forget. I've always been really interested in holding on to things. I'm not a hoarder, but I do really like keeping hold of things I might want to look back on one day. And I used to have a shoe box that I called my memory box. I kept it under my bed and I would keep things like gig tickets or anything important that I thought I might want to look back on one day. And when that shoe box became so full of stuff, that I needed to replace it with something, I got this. A chest. And today I'm gonna show you all my chest. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that on YouTube. I thought it might be nice to open this up because whilst I'm very good at thinking, oh, I might wanna save that so I can look back on it years from now, I'm very bad at actually looking back on things years after the event. So, I've got no idea what's actually in this chest. Possibly a load of tat. Let's find out. Open sesame. Oh wow, I have a lot of stuff in here. We can't look at this because this is pictures of the children I used to teach at nursery and I'm not allowed to share those images, but I can share this, which is a picture of Dylan when he was first born. And this is one of his socks. We were just FaceTiming with Michelle and Kim and Dylan was running around playing in his play kitchen, which is his absolute favorite thing at the moment. And I can't believe he was ever this small. I mean, he's only 15 going on 16 months now. But yeah, he seems way too big to have fitted in that or this. A lot of what I have in the memory box are cards from various people aunts and uncles from Leslie. As you can see, that's a rainbow from a child I used to work with. We have a lot of gig tickets, as I mentioned. Here's one that's signed by the comedian Sarah Millican. There is a story about the time I met Sarah Millican and she signed my gig ticket. And that is that I made myself look a bit of a weirdo. That's just what I do. I met Sarah Millican after she did her gig at Plymouth Pavilions and she was signing autographs for fans outside the venue and she was using a Sharpie to write on the tickets, as you can see. And I'm a weird person, so I said to her, oh, is that a Sharpie? I love the smell of those. Can I sniff it? I mean, I'm very lucky that she just laughed and said, I knock yourself out, pet, and uh, handed me the pen to sniff. So yeah, I kept that as a memory of sniffing Sarah Melican's pen. Let's move on. I kept a lot of my 30th birthday cards because, you know, turning 30 is a big deal. And next year I turn 40 and let's not think about it. Oh, I have an old diary. I mean, come on, of course I'm gonna look at it. Yeah, I'm not reading any of this. But there are some interesting thoughts I was having in February of 2018. Let's, let's not. A photo of me and James from the Monix. That's my musical hero, and I look atrocious in that picture, but you know, it's one of the only ones I have with him, so. I have a picture of me <laughs> drawn by a child I used to work with. <laughs> This is the program from when I went to Germany with a group of girls from my chorus and we sang at a concert. What I have got from the Germany trip is this. It says, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong and I'm so sorry. It says, Kohlit, I'm not gonna say it. It says that. Apparently it means choir leader because Leslie didn't come to Germany, so I was MD. This is the certificate I got for completing the singing course that I did back in the day when I first joined my chorus. You can tell it's old because it's got the old spelling of our name on it. Oh my gosh. This is a letter that my dad wrote me when I passed my driving test. 
Um, I'm assuming is when I passed my driving test. I don't know. Uh, I was taking a driving test. It says, Emma, good luck tomorrow. You're a good driver and I know you can do it. Keep calm, be confident, don't panic. If you make a mistake, move on and don't think about it until afterwards. All the best. Lots of love, Dad. Aww. I passed on my third time. If you're still learning to drive, keep at it. I have reached the childhood photo section of the chest. So that be me, a very young me standing in a puddle, as you do. And there I am with my grandparents. That's cut out because it used to be on a collage on my wall. That is, in case you're wondering, my nan and paps, my nan from the story of the missing ring, if you are a long-term watcher of this channel and saw that video a couple of weeks ago. <gasps> oh, and there's the cupboard that the ring was found in. Ah, now I am not a sporty person, so of course I kept my medal from when I did the race for life. I can't remember exactly how long it took me, but it was about 50 minutes-ish. Like I said, not a runner. You've seen me. I believe this is the menu from my sister and sister-in-law's wedding. It was really, really good. I think I had the chicken wing Kiev to start and then the glazed feather blade. And I'm not sure, I may have had the lemon sorbet. Ah, now these are from the solar eclipse that we had in August of 1999. They made us have protective glasses so we could look at the eclipse and not go blind. This is a letter from the House of Commons. So when I was a little girl, I was obsessed with seals. I thought seals were the cutest things in the world. I still love seals. And I watched an article on like News Round or something about how in some other country they were hunting seal pups for their fur. And I was really upset and I actually cried. And I said, I, I need to do something. And my mum was like, write to the prime minister. And I did. And I got a reply from his office and I kept it. Um, this is from 1993 when the prime minister was John Major. There are some really fabulous old photos in here that I'm not showing because my goodness, I look horrendous. For balance, since you've seen a photo of my other grandparents, these are my mum's mummy and daddy, my nanny May and granddad Charlie. Oh wow! Do you remember when I talked about how much I used to love 911? I have, this is my visitor badge from BBC Radio Cornwall when I went to speak to them. It hasn't got a year on. I thought it said 2022 and I was like, that's next year. Oh my God, that's the future. Yeah, that's that was my visitor number. <laughs> But yes, I went on the radio to talk about one of the books I'd written. We have my old dog's old vet card and also his kennel club registration. Cal, he was a lovely dog. I keep a lot of menus. This is another menu. <laughs> it was from an afternoon tea that my mum and I went to and it was very tasty. There are lots of stickers from when I wrote some children's books and I used to give them out at signings. Yeah, I've done book signings. Aha, Cornwall Today magazine. I kept this for one reason and one reason only and I need to find it. Aha, author of new children's series hoping to save the day. That's me. I'm gonna read the opening because I mean, I'm literally nearly 40 and recording this in my bedroom at my parents' house, but the opening is really lovely. It says, some people are destined for success. I've got a feeling Emma Tophy, age 28, is one of those people. <sighs> I'm gonna carry on because this is lovely. Perhaps the young author is not the most obvious candidate for stardom. A former teaching assistant, she lives with her parents in the quiet town of Weybridge, North Cornwall. But behind her modest, unassuming demeanour lies talent in spades. You know, I don't have a great deal of self-confidence, so I need to keep this kind of stuff lying around. We've got my old school tie, which I can't entirely remember how to... And then up. And then... In. Wow, that's really short. I've... I've tied that, I mean, yeah, I was smarter than this at school. 21st birthday badge. I mean, it's kind of depressing when you think that nearly 20 years have gone by since then. Death comes to us all, people. 
This is probably one of the oldest things in this chest. Now, we've just looked at a magazine article talking about me as a young author. This is from a book competition when I won a prize at Sorchi Junior School, January 1991, which would have made me eight. I was, you know, literary from a very young age. That's the ticket from my first ever concert, and yes, it was 911. No, I will not accept your judgment. <laughs> now we have, this makes me slightly emotional, and I promise not to cry. This is a letter that my nan wrote to me. She went to Norway with my granddad and she sent a letter to my sister and I. It says, we're coming down for your birthday, Emma. We will come on the Friday so as to be there on the Saturday. I'll try and bring all the grandchildren some chocolate back if we have enough money. Tell dad not to work too hard. Take care, love to you all. God bless, Nan and Paps. So I keep that because I don't have any of my grandparents anymore. So it's nice to have that. Now, you will see when I open this, please forgive me for it being the Daily Mail. My parents used to read it. That's the newspaper from September the 12th, 2001. I kind of knew that was gonna be a day that was gonna be unforgettable. Don't forget my birthday, September the 11th. So, you know, resonated pretty hard and I kept the paper from the next day. Oh, another signed gig ticket. This one is signed by Damon and Graham from Blur. I made the paper when I went to see Blur with my friend Kirsty because we queued, we queued and some journalists were like, oh, how long have you been waiting for this gig? And we were like, a really long time. <laughs> what else have we got here? We've got the empty bottle from the first ever bottle of perfume that I ever had and my nan bought me it. Still smells really nice, actually. I still wear this perfume now. It's Le Jardin by Max Factor. But yeah, it was the first perfume I ever had and it was the last Christmas my nan was alive for. She gave me this and she told me it was because I was a young lady now. I was 12. And I got my first ever bottle of perfume. And yeah, when she died, I was like, I can never get rid of that bottle. And it still smells lovely. We've got my senior prefect badge from school because, you know, I'm a nerd and of course I kept that. We have got, now this is weird. I kept a bouncy ball. Yeah, okay, it's just your average bouncy ball. There's nothing special about it. But when I was about 11, I was obsessed with Red Dwarf, the TV show. And um, I got this bouncy ball on a, ho a holiday somewhere. And because it was green, I decided to call it Arnold. <laughs> because at the time in the show, Arnold Rimmer wore a green uniform. And I don't, I don't remember the full story, but I do remember that I somehow convinced myself that Arnold the bouncy ball had magic power. <laughs> Look, I was 11, okay? We're all weird when we're young. So yeah, I never, I never got rid of Arnold. He lives in the box. We have the photo of me on the night I went to see the Mannix for the first time. That was me checking my outfit, making sure I was ready. Aha! This is the first time I was ever published in a magazine as a writer. I used to have a column in this magazine, which was called In Touch, and it was the magazine of R.E.F. Innsworth. I only had about three columns before we moved away because it was a magazine that only came out sort of once every month or every three months. This article was about becoming a teenager by Emma Tophy, aged 14. I'm gonna read a little bit of this. It's early in the morning and you've just woken up. In the next room you can hear your mum excitedly calling, happy birthday! But do you get up? Of course you don't. In fact, from this morning onwards, you don't intend to remove yourself from your bed ever again. Instead, you lie looking at your ceiling and imagine just how great it would look with a life-size poster of Ronan Keating or Posh Spice on it. No. Neither of those people have ever been on my bedroom walls. Well, no, that's a lie. They have, but not individually, just because I like the bands they were in. You lie there and wonder if you have the money to buy a Reebok sweater. Oh, wow, way to date yourself, Emma. And that's when it hits you. You've entered the teenage zone. Your life will never be the same again. Oh no, no more getting up at the crack of dawn to see if the play bus has stopped at the roundabout stop. Because face it, you're far too cool for that now. <sighs> oh no. 
Wow. I mean, my idea of what cool was reading this is really genuinely tragic. <laughs> it says, once you have cool syndrome, there is no cure. Your whole wardrobe is hit. Gone is your trusty My Little Pony top and trouser set to make way for an Adidas jacket and jogging bottoms. <laughs> That is how I used to dress, because I thought I was cool. I mean, anyway, I'm very proud of my first moment in print, don't judge me. There's more we could look at, but I will save that for another time. I'm gonna put all of this back, because I feel like I've reminisced enough for the time being. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane with me, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe, my floaty head is up there. I do make actual videos where I'm not just, you know, reminiscing sometimes, it's great. And last week's video is over there. I feel like I need to tidy up, so I'll talk to you next week. Bye.